This is our psychic shifter. We named it psychic shifter for obvious reasons because the top resembles a crystal ball. This shifter is cast right here in Charlotte, North Carolina. It's a product that we're, we're very proud of. It is made to fit ratchet top transmissions from 1952 to midway 1979. Typically the way we come out with a new product is somebody from the team will either have an idea or we'll see a need in the market and we'll just kind of talk about that openly, what that idea is. And in this case specifically, we knew we wanted to come out with a, a new jockey shifter and we knew we wanted to be cast aluminum and then we knew we wanted this specific jockey shifter to contain its own shift knob in it. We have other jockey shifters that have interchangeable knobs, but for whatever reason, we thought it would be neat to incorporate this all as one unit. So we knew we wanted a cast aluminum jockey shifter, but we really didn't know what it was gonna look like in the end. So in Fusion 360, we, we just started drawing. We started with the ratchet top where it mounts to the ratchet lid, and then from there just started extruding and coming up with different styles and different angles. We had a few different options. We then 3D printed them, and held them in our hand and, and compared the different options, mounted them up to a transmission to make sure that they fit okay. Actually from our first couple prints that we did, uh, we realized that the, the web running the entire length of it was too small and we were kind of scared about that breaking and uh, actually the overall length of it was too short so we had to make that slightly larger. After we got a print we were happy with, we then moved into figuring out a way to get this manufactured. We knew from the beginning that we wanted to sandcast these but we also knew it was gonna be a struggle to find somebody to sandcast them for us. So an important thing for us on getting it sandcasted was this was the traditional way of how a lot of parts were made back in the 60s and the 70s, and, and even earlier than that, but I'm, I'm talking specifically in the motorcycle chopper scene. Sandcasting was very popular in the 60s and 70s. So to us, it was important to try to keep this part as traditional as possible in that sense. With all of our products, we strive to keep everything made in USA. And so that was an important thing for us when we were looking for somebody to sandcast these parts. We searched all over the USA trying to find somebody to sandcast these for us and either the quantities that we were producing weren't high enough, weren't great enough for what the company did, or the price was just absolutely insane and it was unaffordable, unfortunately. Eventually we found a company named Jenkins Electric that was 10 minutes down the street from us. Once we found Jenkins Electric, we knew it was the right fit. They're based here in Charlotte, North Carolina. They've been doing this for much longer than anybody else, and uh, their quality and craftsmanship and attention to detail is exactly what we were looking for. The first thing Jenkins requested from us were drawings of the shifter as well as a 3D printed part. Uh, from there, they created a mold pattern on their CNC machine, and uh, in this specific mold pattern, they designed it so that we'd be able to pour three jockey shifters at once. Once the mold pattern's in the foundry shop, uh, the first step of the sand casting process is to actually use that mold pattern to create a sand mold. From there, you heat up these large chunks of aluminum, which eventually melt and then are used to pour into the cavities or into the gates of the mold itself. Once the mold is filled with this hot aluminum, you have to let it cool. Once it cools, you knock off the sand and you're left with a raw cast aluminum product. And since they pour three at a time, the next step is to trim the excess material off. After the excess material is trimmed off, these shifters then come back to us where we finish them in-house. Once we get them back in-house, the first thing we do is we cut off all the excess material. So we do that by trimming whatever we can off in the bandsaw and then uh, moving that to a little bench grinder that we have. Uh, with, a, with a pretty aggressive belt on it. After that's done, after all the, the majority of the excess is off, we then finish grind them all by hand. When we started this project, we never realized or never understood how much work actually goes into finishing products like this. Uh, we were thinking it was just something as simple as we pour it and it's done and here's a finished product. But uh, we probably have close to 30 minutes a piece in just finishing one of them uh, in-house. The next thing we do is uh, try to bring back that original casting look because for us, that was something that was important from the beginning is to make sure it looked cast. Um, and so the way that we do that is we, we go back and we needle scale every single one of these and create a uniform finish over the entire piece. Once we're happy with the surface finish, we then throw them in our tumbler. It's basically a, a, the second step of a, 
applying a uniform finish. And then after that, we take it over to our manual milling machine and drill the final holes. After we finish all the manufacturing, basically the last step is for us to inspect them all to make sure that we're happy with them. After they pass inspection, we package them up and they're ready to sell. This is a really, really, really cool product for us and one that I'm very, very proud of. It's a product that we've been dreaming about for a while and we just didn't really know how to make that happen. So with the help of Jenkins here in Charlotte, North Carolina, this product is made 100% here in Charlotte, North Carolina within a five mile radius. We're very proud of that and this is a product I'm gonna look back on many years down the road and be happy that we did it.